Um, all right. Now I need to say something stupid so we're smiling. Glad to be here. <laughs> My best buddy, Brian Tooley. <laughs>
electronically control uh, coolant flow through these passages to draw heat out of the casting. And that's all in the interest of getting a better part, a stronger part. And that's manifested, or you measure that through mechanical test bars that we pull out. And it's worth saying that, that, that when you look at air set and green sand, that tooling is not too expensive. Yeah. Um, what was the rough price range for oh, that? Oh, you, you can make it, a, a, you could buy a commercial pattern for a cylinder head for, still for probably 50 grand, depending on how you did the water jacket. Yeah. And uh, so this, this 50 tool. 50 to 100,000. Yeah. So a semi-permanent mold tool cost. Well, we have 160 initially, and then we just dropped another 100 yeah. on it. So about yeah. a quarter of a million dollars in yeah. tooling. And so no one else in the industry that I'm aware of has a semi-permanent mold LS head at all. Everyone is either air set or green sand. No one has spent the big bucks on the semi-permanent mold tooling to make a silver yeah. head. Yeah, and, and the, even though it's semi-permanent mold, it can still get screwed up. There's things in the process that can make it a bad part. You know, you can have stress in it, there's all kinds of opportunities to have mistakes. So, um, and we've experienced some of those. So the difference is we're not, we're not releasing it until it's right. And we know what right looks like. So we approached foundry number three. Uh, we had some requests for mechanical properties as, as part of our purchase agreement. And it was all accepted even on the drawing, but somewhere through the process that slipped through the cracks, we started making castings and the mechanical properties. We did have some porosity issues with uh, you know, a lot of core gas and whatnot, but once we got a solid casting, it, the mechanical properties were not up to what I wanted what we originally accepted. So what he's saying is the the tool didn't have water cooling and it needed water cooling. Yeah. So after yeah. months and months and months of pouring and testing and sampling, we could not get the mechanical properties we were looking for. Pulled the tool, pulled the tooling out of the foundry, shipped them to a dye shop to have the water cooling put in the tooling. Yes. Um, and that's in process right now, and that'll be finished. And what a uh, the mold should be ready to go back to foundry in uh, about three to four more weeks. Uh, it's in process right now. We're totally remaking the mold base um, at considerable expense to BTR, but it's our commitment to you, the consumer, that you, we are, we're committed to this being a, the, this, the best cylinder head on the market, you know, from a durability standpoint as well as a performance hydraulic roller street head. That's what our target market is. Yeah, we definitely have the performance on the dyno currently. Of course, it's canned valve, which compared to any inline valve cathedral port, uh, LS3 port head, is uh, the canned valve is like cheating. It's right? an unfair That's advantage. The, yeah, it's a cheat code. And um, and so, uh, you know, so the power production, uh, these do have a patent pending uh, feature in them because um, we don't want the Chinese uh, copying yeah. or anyone yeah. else uh, copying. These castings are made in the USA, in the Midwest. Very proud yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, in fact, we are adding Made in USA and a, a little flag uh, moniker here on the exhaust side that, that the production castings will have. Yeah, that's awesome. Let me talk about mechanical properties and why you want really good mechanical properties. Mechanical properties that Rick's talking about, that's the, the strength of the casting and the ductility of the casting. Right. And the, the actual measurements are it's uh, ductility, tensile, yield, tensile, and, and yield. Uh, elongation. Yeah, elongation. So yield is when the part starts to move. And, it's, and then when it breaks, is that's a tensile. And the amount of stretch on the sample from when it started to move to when it broke, and that percentage, uh, usually it's a two inch length if the test bar is long enough. The difference between two inches and that is the percentage of elongation. And I, we don't really want to share the actual numbers we're looking for because it makes it easier. We've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in pursuit of this, and uh, we're not going to just share that, but I'm going to tell you it's, it's aerospace standard. And uh, like I said, way beyond what the book says would be acceptable for commercial casting. So what this quest has been for is to make something beyond a commercial casting that uh, is an affordable because of the manufacturing process. The, the primary goal here at Brian Tooley is to offer the consumer a great value. And of course, we have to make a profit at doing this. So we, there's cost pressure always from you know, domestic suppliers as well as Asian suppliers. Um, this is definitely the most painful project as far as time to market that I've ever participated, but I would say also the strictest criteria and the steepest competition that we've ever had to compete against because there's a lot of good LS cylinder heads out there. 
And so uh, this is not a casual undertaking. Uh, we learned a lot on LT, and that's, you know, really, I like cannon valves to start with, but, um, you know, they're using a lot of LT, LT technology here with the same LT valves and three-quarter or the one-inch reach plug. Uh, and so it's basically a Gen 4 LT, for lack of a better description. Gen 3 and Gen 4. Yeah, yeah. LT. yeah. And I think you, yeah. you're very yeah. good at this statement. You know, life is about managing expectations. Yes. And yeah. We put out an expectation that this was, and certainly was a truthful expectation on our part, that this was going to be available in 24. Oh, yeah. And here End we are. Yeah. 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 And uh, we value our, our, we value as a company, as an organization, as a leadership team, truthful communication. And that's why we're making this video today, because mm -hmm. we don't want anyone to feel we deceived them. This is not a hoax. It was a... Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> this is a publicity stunt. <laughs> this was not a publicity stunt. This yeah. is, uh, uh, truth be told, this has caused some medical issues on our team. <laughs> right. So, yeah. <laughs> um, we've, we lived. <laughs> and so, uh, but we got some scars to show. So, uh, we've experienced the pain, but we're committed to this project. And I'm grateful that Brian stuck with it because a lot of companies would have ditched it by now. When you get that far down the road, you can't you can't ditch it. <laughs> yeah, you spent way too much money yeah. to ditch it. Yeah, so, but uh, those who hang on there, hang in there, and uh, stick with it will be rewarded for a really nice product that'll last for. You can hand off to your grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for uh, listening to our TED talk today on uh, why we don't have solar heads uh, launched yet. Um, we're very sorry that these things are not launched yet. Uh, no one. Uh, dislikes that more than more than us um, as a team uh, because this has been such a, a painful process but we're not going to release something before it's ready and so appreciate everyone hanging with us uh, through this process yes we thought we were going to launch these things early in 2025 and now we're going to be firmly into fall 2025 uh, before we before we start shipping castings but we feel really good about the direction that we've gone and, and the mechanical properties and everything about the quality of the cylinder heads. Please continue to follow our content. Uh, please like the channel, uh, subscribe, and hit the like button. We appreciate that.